Hey everyone, I'm Kosh and this is The Creative Breakthrough. My mission is to eliminate the starving artist and give creatives the codes to build audiences, cash flow, and make a living doing what they love. Today, I wanna to speak about how to get brand deals. This is a big topic that I see with creatives. As a consultant, they ask me a lot, Kosh, how do I get brand deals? What do I need to do to get brand deals? So today I wanna to talk about the three components that get you brand deals. We have the brand, the script, and the pitch. And I'm gonna go through each one of those. And this can also work for getting clients, but I'm gonna speak specifically about getting brand deals. So the first thing you need to have established is your brand. And that probably sounds cliche, but I'm gonna make it very clear. They're looking for brands that understand who their customer is and also have a clear brand identity. So a brand identity just means everything that you put out is uniform. The colors, the logo, the messaging. The messaging is a, the biggest one. The messaging meaning like what you communicate to people. Is it uniform across the board? Are you speaking to the same type of people? Is the information that you put out similar to what you've been putting out? It's not like, oh, I'm talking about football one day and then I'm talking about video the next day and then I'm talking about badminton the next day. You're talking about the same kind of concepts that apply to whoever the audience is that you're speaking to. So that's the brand piece. And then the next piece is to build an EPK or a pitch deck. I'm gonna show you in a moment what a good EPK or deck looks like. I actually created this deck for one of my clients and this deck got her a $10,000 sponsorship from a botanical garden. She's a podcast about horticulture. And so I wanna use this deck as an example to show you what a good deck looks like so that when you present it to a brand, they'll actually give you the time of day and not just throw it away in the trash. Okay, so here's the deck that I made for my client that I was speaking of. Now, I wanna preface this first by showing you her Instagram to give you some context about her brand identity and also her brand messaging and how that helps when you're pitching to brands. I wanna first give you a look at her following. When she first started working with me, she had around 11,000 followers, and now she's at almost 17,000. Also, you're gonna see consistent branding throughout as I scroll back to around this time when we got this deal. So as you can see, some of these posts are very nature oriented on the spot, but if you look at how the podcast is being portrayed, you're seeing similar graphic design, similar colors. And then also, if we get into some of these posts around the messaging, if I pull up this post right here, similar colors, similar design, similar graphics. As you can see here, like in the messaging, there's a personality, there's a tone. Soil Cousins, that's who she calls her audience. We out here, repping black in the garden from sea to shining sea. Where y'all at? Louisiana, New Mexico, South Carolina. She's like playing on kind of the, the rap cadence as well. Help us represent in every state for our first merch drop. And then even the name of the shirt, Melanin on Mustard T-shirt. So I just want you to have some context to understand how you need to be communicating to have a brand that people resonate with that then when bigger brands want to sponsor you and they see your brand, they understand exactly who you are and what you stand for. Back to the presentation. First page of a deck like this should always just be visually striking. We, we have our similar brand colors, like I mentioned. It doesn't look like it's a different brand. It looks exactly who we've been presenting ourselves online on social media. So we have the logo Black in the Garden, and then we have photos. We have a photo of the founder and the creator. And then we also have a photo that just speaks to what the brand is about. It's visually striking. That's what we want to capture people out the gate because these marketing directors are getting tons of brand decks and tons of inquiries. And if we send them something bland, no business that wants to partner with another business wants something bland. Even if that business that is trying to partner with you is bland, they're coming to you for some excitement. Next page is we want to do a quick overview of who we are. And we want to do that in one to two sentences. This way, people understand exactly what your brand is about. And we're using easy to understand words so that people don't have to read a novel and try to decipher what your brand is about. So really, this is the elevator pitch plus one more sentence about who the founder is to give them context 
because she is the host of the podcast as well. So we got the Black in the Garden is the voice for the Black millennial experience with horticulture. That's very clear to understand. That might sound like a mouthful, but if I was to read this for the first time and I'm a marketing director at a certain educational level, at a certain pay grade, I'm gonna know exactly what that means. The Black in the Garden podcast is the voice for the millennial experience with horticulture. I know exactly what the podcast talks about. And then we move on to the host because she's such an important face within the brand. Host Cola B. Talkin started the podcast to fill a gap in the plant podcast niche representing black voices, history, and culture in a fun and contemporary way. So that way you understand why she started the podcast and who she is in two sentences. Still very much the same aesthetics. The look feels very similar and it should always feel that way throughout. Third page. This page you may not need, but for her, we needed to elaborate on who she was more than the two sentences because of her expertise, because of what she's been able to do in the past and the authority that she's built behind the movement because Black in the Garden is more than just a podcast, it's a movement. And we need these people that are the heads of marketing to understand who she is in a deeper sense. And this is about three sentences, four sentences so that they can resonate with her message more and will offer us a brand deal because of that. If you are a black person or someone who has been traditionally marginalized, it is so important that you use your cultural diversity clout to your benefit. Because if people are gonna pay you for your culture, then if you feel comfortable doing it, you might as well get paid for being who you are. And that's what a lot of these brands are gravitating towards because they want that cultural diversity clout in their campaigns. They want to be connected to those kind of brands because they want to expand their customer base to other communities. And then the next slide, and you may not actually have this slide, but this slide is good to have if you have a flagship product that has been doing really well already. This helps create a sense of urgency to work with you because you've done something on your own, you've proven your value to your customer base, and another brand who wants to partner with you is like, wow, they've sold this many copies of this themselves, or they've sold this many units of this themselves. That means that they have people that are hungry for what they have to offer, and we wanna get a piece of that. And just a point to speak on cultural diversity clout, make sure that if you're using that to your advantage, make sure you're doing it with brands that truly respect that and not just pay you to promote anything because your audience will sense that and they'll be turned off by it. So just be aware of that. This slide is some of the data that you get from working with me. We survey the audience and we incentivize them to fill out the survey. And so this data came from a survey that me and Cola did. This data is super important. It's super important to have good specific data in your deck because this helps the brands that are interested in partnering with you see if the audience that you have is similar to the audience that they have even if it's not exactly the same because they may be trying to reach a new community or a new audience like i spoke of earlier but it's good to have some specific stats like the ones i'm about to cover here to help them really get a grasp of who you're reaching and what value that brings to them as a brand if they're not reaching those people which more than likely they're reaching out to you because they want to reach those people knowing this information helps them trust that you can reach those people and solve the problem for them and they should pay you as an influencer to solve that problem. I'll run through this quickly. This was the last time we updated this deck. So just from looking at her Instagram page a minute ago, you've seen she's already grown close to 3,000 followers since this was created because we haven't updated it yet. That's something you'll have to do as well as update it frequently if you're growing like that. But we're telling people we have 13, almost 14,000 followers. Our average growth is 433 followers per month, which is nuts. We're doing 82,000 average monthly impressions. So 82,000 people are seeing us organically. That's what that means. And the hashtag black in the garden has been used over 5,000 times. The next one is the podcast insights. At that time, she had done 65 episodes. She was getting 3,300 monthly streams and 30K total streams in only nine months. We're showing brands that we can scale quickly which that's what every brand wants to hear because at the bottom line, they're trying to make money and scaling is the name of the game when it comes to making money. Then we have the audience. We know 
more women than men are fans of the brand. Cool. Top cities, this is pretty normal stuff that you'd be able to get the information of and put out. But the great thing about her is she's reaching major cities. That's what makes this super valuable. So Los Angeles, Atlanta, New York, Chicago. Then we have top countries, which everybody doesn't have top countries, but she's doing United States, Canada, and UK. So that's incredible as well. That helps the brands that want to partner with you reach new worlds. Okay, next page. This is from working with me as well. We surveyed people and we're able to see audiences yearly buying power around plants, around plant products. And as you can see, there's an asterisk here and it says info based on a focus group. So that was our survey that we did and that was our focus group. Brands are able to see, yo, 53% of her audience is willing to spend up to $400 on whatever she recommends to them, which is hugely valuable. And then we have willingness to purchase from us, us being black in the garden. 95% of people said yes, which means they trust her. That's what that question is used for the trust aspect of things. When a brand sees this, they know that people trust you if they're willing to put their dollars up and buy from you because they want what you have and whatever it is, as long as it aligns with what your brand is about, we want it. And then audience yearly income. This is a great stat to have for people who actually share it. You see 10% didn't wanna share, they didn't feel comfortable, that's okay. But we know that 31% of people make 40 to 60K. So. When a brand looks at this, they'll know that the people that are buying from you make about this much yearly as a salary. And that'll help them understand what product to align with you to then position in front of the audience to get them to buy. This is just invaluable information for when you pitch to a brand because they're like, wow, this influencer actually knows these stats and this is helpful for us to make a decision on working with them as opposed to working with the hundred other people that have reached out to us that didn't send us a deck like this. Then this page is really good because this is for something called social proof and authority. So it shows that on our own, we've been able to have these people as guests on the podcast and they all have huge followings. And then we give a one sentence on who they are to just further stamp them as a expert in their spaces. This shows that we're growing our podcast, but also the traction because of the people that are willing to show up on the Black in the Garden platform. And then this is more authority and belief that we are experts in the space. Black in the Garden is an expert in the horticulture podcast space. These organizations have endorsed the podcast, which means that we are legit, basically. That's what we're saying. Next page, we have more social proof. And you might be able to fit all of these on the same page. You might be able to fit notable guests, endorsed by, and what our audience is saying on the same page. If you can, put it on one page. But because these things couldn't look good aesthetically on one page, we had to do it on separate pages. These are some of the great reviews that we got on the Black in the Garden podcast, and they really speak to who the audience is and what they love about Black in the Garden podcast, which goes back to my point earlier about messaging, just making sure everything is uniform. This stands out to brands, again, because it creates a, a sense of authority and expertise, and it shows brands like, wow, the things that she's saying connect with people deeply, and they wanna not only spend their money, but they're willing to write long reviews about the emotional connection that they have with the brand. At the end of the day, all brands are striving to make money from an emotional connection that you have with the brand. Okay, and then last page, this is just kind of like your contact information. So it can be fun to just say like, can't wait to start or excited to work with you, something like that. We used Let's Grow Together because we felt like it aligned with the brand and it felt cute, right? This isn't really gonna sway anybody. They're probably gonna click this page and just see your contact information and be like, cool. When I'm ready to reach out, I'll reach out. You have your email, you have your website, and then you can put your phone number on there if you'd like. And that's the basis of the deck. It's eight to 10 pages. Like I said earlier, if you can fit your notable guests, your endorsed by and your reviews slash feedback from your audience, then that could be one page and this could be a total of seven pages. But overall, you want about seven to 10 pages, nothing longer than that or else you're gonna lose people. And yeah, that's it. That's really it for the deck. It's pretty straightforward.
If you're interested in working with me to clarify who your audience is and get these specific stats and insights from them, then you can click the link in the description and book a free 15 minute consultation with me to see how we can work together. Now let's head back to the video. The next component to getting brand deals is having a script that you can reach out to these brands with on a consistent basis. So what do I mean by a script? I mean reaching out to brands via DM or LinkedIn. LinkedIn is huge for this. And having a framework that you can use as a template for how you approach these brands. I'm gonna hop back over to the computer and I'm gonna show you what I mean by this and how this allowed me and my client to close a $10,000 deal with a botanical garden. Pitching the script through LinkedIn. You can also pitch the script through Instagram or another social platform, but LinkedIn works best when you're connected with people because you can message them and the response rate is way higher and you're not dealing with requests like you deal with in Instagram. I've logged into my LinkedIn to give you an example because I can't show you the exact example that I had for Black in the Garden because I don't have access to her LinkedIn. I've already taken a moment to search marketing directors for different brands. So let's say, for example, you are a artist and you're more of a Janae Aiko type of artist. You're more kind of casual. You make kind of vibey music that is insightful and you drink a lot of tea in the studio. You're a singer and you drink a lot of tea in the studio. Well, you might drink the Republic of Tea. That's a brand that has been around for a long time. And that might be a type of tea brand that you drink. So I went on LinkedIn and I just went to the search bar and I just searched marketing director, Republic of Tea. This is who came up for that role. She is the minister of digital presence at the Republic of Tea. If you come down here, it says director of e-commerce and marketing. So she's the director of marketing at the Republic of Tea. Her name is Angela Bruce. Now you can't send her a message right now because you're not connected to her. So you would need to connect with her and she would accept your request and then you could send her a message. And so that's how we did with Black in the Garden in the horticulture and plant space. And what you would wanna do in your space or the space that you're trying to target is you wanna make a list of different people in that space. So Angela Bruce would be a part of that list. You'd wanna make a list of at least 100 people and start reaching out to them one by one. Remember that this is a numbers game. So if you reach out to 100 people, if your message is strong and if people check their LinkedIn frequently, which most do, don't expect to get more than like 10 responses back. If you get 10, you're doing incredible. If you get one, you're doing incredible. It's a numbers game. So you got to send out a lot of messages to different people that you want to work with, but you have to tailor them to those brands. But right now I'm going to focus on just the Republic of Tea. Here's a template for what you would message her. So you would say, hey, Angela, had a quick question. And because earlier I mentioned using your diversity clout as a tool to get brand deals and brand partnerships, this script is somewhat tailored for that. So is the Republic of Tea interested in doing social media partnerships with creators of color? And this is where you have to do a little bit of research because you wanna make sure that the message that you're sending to the person actually makes sense for where their brand is right now. So I went over to the Republic of Tea's Instagram and I took a look at their content and they have really good content, all right? It's like really professionally done. But as a human being, I don't really see any human beings in this content. And when I do, it's mainly just white people. I see a white woman here and I see a white hand here. But outside of this, and this looks like an Asian woman potentially or another white woman. Outside of this, I don't see much diversity here. And also it feels a little bit disconnected connected because there's no face. I'm not seeing any faces in most of this content. It's just photos of the tea. After I do that research, I go back over to my message that I'm going to send to Angela. And I'm going to say, when I did a deep dive on the brand's Instagram, I noticed there wasn't much content featuring diverse communities. I'm looking to work with brands I truly love and use daily. Republic of Tea is one of my faves, and I believe my audience would be more than receptive to your products. So I'm using the term more than receptive because this means like people would be overjoyed to have the tea presented to them 
through your social media. It just helps whoever you're speaking to feel confident about working with you. And you would really include this sentence if you didn't have any past work that you could talk about. If you did have past work, your third sentence would be written more like this. In the last year, I've worked with Tazo and Bigelow Tea Companies to create content that expands their segments in different communities. The first thing I did was I've said that in the last year, I've worked with other brands in the same space and I created content and this is being specific. This is getting more specific. Being specific is important for people to believe what you're actually saying to them. I said that expands their segments in different communities. So this is more so speaking the language, like segment meaning another group of people and different communities is like a professional way of saying different races or different demographics of people or different cultures of people. And this worked really well when we sent similar messages like this for Black in the Garden, because so many brands today are so afraid of not looking culturally inclusive that when you send a message like this, you tend to get a response because the people that work in these organizations a lot of times are white and they don't want to look like they're ignoring you or they are not inclusive. So it's putting pressure on them to be more inclusive. And then you want to always have a call to action at the end. Are you free for 15 minutes next week to talk more about this? That way, we're asking them, can we get a little bit of your time so you can, we can talk face to face and you can get a better understanding of who I am and what I do as a creative. You also could use the call to action of, would it be totally impossible for 15 minutes of your time next week to discuss this more? Something along the lines of that. And you're going to send these messages out on LinkedIn or on Instagram. But remember, on Instagram, you may just go to the request folder and nobody will ever see it. You're going to send these messages out for brands that you're interested in working with. But what I like to tell creatives is look at brands that aren't ginormous like Coca-Cola, Samsung, Apple. Look about two steps below that at like the simple brands that you use every day that you're really a fan of and reach out to them. And when you reach out to them, you just want to then tailor your script to that specific brand. So if you're an artist and you use a certain type of headphones, maybe you use Skull Candy. So you would be like, is Skull Candy interested in doing social media partnerships with creators of color? But you would want to go over to Skull Candy Instagram and like get a look at what their content looks like. And they're pretty on point. It's trying to look for brands that are kind of lacking on the content. Skull Candy is, is like ahead of the curve. Like they know exactly who they're talking to and what they're doing. You see all types of people in this content. This wouldn't really be a good pitch unless you have a big, big following. Unless you have over 10,000 followers, then this wouldn't really probably benefit you because they're already tapped in with the culture well. But when you go back to like, a Republic of Tea and you look at the difference between both of those, you should see like a huge difference. That's really it in terms of the script to pitch brands to get brand deals. Let's jump back into my original video and wrap this thing up. Take the script that I just showed you and then put in the sweat equity. That'll put you top of mind for the next cycle of marketing budget they have so that you can start getting these brand partnerships. And I believe if you apply these techniques to your brand, there's no doubt in my mind that you will achieve more brand deals. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please just give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.